everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I'm showing you how to investigate your front wheel speed sensors if you're having problems like I am with your ABS traction control uh, warning light. And um, I'm gonna do it the easy way first, i.e. examining from the top down to make sure that I can isolate the problem um, as easily as possible. And if I need to go underneath, we go there too. If you're not lucky enough to have a ramp, um, I get a lot of questions about where's the safest place to jack up your XK8. Well, if you're jacking up from the front and you want to use one jack, as I do, to raise both wheels just a little bit off the ground, this is the best location. This is the front of the car. There we go, my plate just in shot, I think, over there. Uh, so the under tray, um, cavity. This is plastic and on my car is like a rubber blade here. This is also plastic on the other side of this rubber blade, but it's on top of a cross member that goes across the width of the car. And you can jack up on the middle of that. Be careful. Uh, it might be worth actually putting a piece of wood on top if you're uh, worried about your plastics. Um, because it will creak just a little bit, but jack gently, jack carefully. You wouldn't want to roth the car around too much jack like this, but it's the easiest way to lift the car at the front in the middle. If you've got a coupe and you're a bit confused by this shot, you won't have this, which is a strengthening um, cruciform that is only fitted to the convertible cars. People so often start testing at the brake sensors, but it's a hell of a lot easier to discover the problem if it's up here at the top. This cable, which is next to the airbox, comes from your car into a connector, out to a smooth wire. This goes through the bodywork, a little bit further down just underneath the airbox, and that's what goes to your brake sensor. So if you want to look at the brake sensor and a signal that's coming from it, all you need to do is lift the back edge of this clip and push, disconnecting the car from the brake sensor. The brake sensor wire it's attached to a clip on the bodywork and with a tiny tab underneath it you push down towards the bodywork and then you can slide it off of that. You can see there's the gap where I've just slid it off. There's the tab. You just bend that down and it pulls a little pin out of there. That's connected to your wheel speed sensors. Just two wires and the wheel speed sensor is a electromagnetic device. It basically, think of it as a metal detector. It's detecting a castellated ring going round on your wheel. And every time that one of the lumps on that wheel comes past, it detects the metal and generates a very small current. And it's just an inductive effect of a magnet being near metal. So, if your wheel sensor is working and this cable is working, then if you connect to these two uh, terminals, you should see a very small current whilst you turn the wheel. If you don't see that very small current, then this, this wire with its two connectors, one here and one underneath the car, is a replaceable part and can often fail because it's connected to the top wishbone. There we go, this is the other wheel arch, but same cable, the fatter, closer to us cable, out those two black ones, comes through the bulkhead. And that is the pivot point of your top wishbone. And it runs along the top of that. And then goes down to the wheel speed sensor, where that yellow connector 
gets plugged in to the black thing, which is a wheel speed sensor. So that cable is a separate item, can be replaced, and because it's on the wishbone and pivoting and bouncing around with the suspension, it can fail. Put this back together, slide that one onto the clip, and pull that one back into place. So to do this project you're going to need some fine probes for your electrical test kit and although this has got a very pointy tip it's too big so very fine indeed and that's easily achieved if you've got one of these which is a little adapter which you can snap on and there we go and now you can see that's properly fine. So how, what do you do if you don't have one of those? You're gonna have to make one. Fortunately, dead easy. Things you've probably got lying around in your garage. Uh, I've got my box of crocodile clips. This is typical little insulated crocodile clip, but anything would do that's a croc clip and a safety pin. And all you need to do, let me wire out the way, is undo the safety pin, unwind it. Although they're springy, you can bend these things straight. I'm going to use a pair of pliers. If you're accident prone, get somebody else to help with this, or at least get the plasters ready because safety pin being made unsafetyfied. Lots of uh, pricked fingers are kind of inevitable. There we go. So just want to straighten that out a little. And you don't have to get it perfectly straight. In fact, it's a bit of an advantage to do that. And I want from the tip to there, this kink in it's quite useful. So we're going to cut that off carefully with your eyes. Hold on to both ends. So I've now got my pointy end of safety pin with a bit of bend in it. Grab your crop clip or whatever you've got that's similar. And if this is a crocodile, what you're going to do is send the pointy end in to the croc's mouth under the spring that's in the pivot so you're going along the bottom of this as you look at it and because there's a spring in there that will grip to a great extent that safety pin so you push him through you're only going to get him so far before you can't hold on to that end anymore the pin starts to come out there <coughs> at which point turn him around grab hold of the pointy end open the clip and pull that through now because we've got a bit of a bend in it and it's going under that pivot the pin is trying to point uphill and we've got a bit of spring which is really useful because I want to make everything nice and tight all I'm going to do now is bend these two tabs around it and the way I find that easiest is stick the point in the workbench pull the crocodile clip over to one side, get the pin between those two little wings, and bring the other one over. And you've got a pin with a bit of tension in it, keeping it nice and tight in all of this. And there's your insulator. Again, be careful you don't bodge yourself at this stage. 
Here's my top tip. Put the uh, crop clip on something and it makes it easy to thread through the rubber sleeve. Safety pin is so sharp it tends to want to catch on the rubber and make its own way out but eventually you'll get it in. And pushed it all the way in. There we go. We have an adapter. So now you can modify your probes to give you a really good, very sharp, very narrow connector. Like so. So were your probes connected to <coughs> the link lead that goes to your front wheel sensor. Put your voltmeter ammeter onto one of its more sensitive settings and spin your wheel by hand. And as long as you maintain a decent contact, which I'm not, there we go. When you turn the wheel, you should get a signal. Let's turn that there. And if you can get a signal when you spin your wheel and stop your wheel and it disappears, your sensor's working. So that's the first check. The link lead on the left hand side, viewed from the driver's compartment of my UK spec car, is just here. And it's hard to get out because it's underneath the uh, pipe work for the brakes. So you might need to use a little screwdriver to disconnect and what you've got there is the end that comes from the ABS controller. It's this end we want, which is still clipped to the bodywork. I'm just going to take the cover off my ABS controller. And depress the little tab underneath this that holds it to its clip. There he is. So this is uh, got a clip pushed through it and it goes through from this side and to release it, slide it off. You just gotta go behind it and lower that little tab just a little bit and then you can slide it off in that direction. So this one is probably the one I'm suspicious of because I was completely unable to remove the wheel sensor without drilling it out when I did the brake saga. Spin the wheel. Absolutely nothing. Let's just check my connections. Not 
the easiest thing to hook up to. Nothing. Which is good, because it means we're on the right corner. So here we are inside the wheel arch. Here is the cable that we were testing from the other end, which goes up and onto the wishbone. And I'm going to disconnect it from its wheel sensor, like so. So now what I've done is hooked up a little wire to the plug on the uh, engine bay side of this link wire to one of the two little terminals. And I've run it through my meter which is now connected to do ohms or resistance and it's got a little setting that makes it beep so I don't have to look at the screen to tell me that the, the wires are connected together. So what I'm hoping for is I should be able to connect the wire under the bonnet and go to the other end of this cable uh, here and the wires should be obviously continuous all the way through. So I've hooked my little uh, probe on the end of here because it's the same tiny, tiny connector as previous. And going in here, two wires, don't matter which one I take, one of them should be connected, not that one. Hear that? That one is. Switch it over under the bonnet. And hopefully the other one is connected. Yep. So that cable that goes from under the bonnet to under the wheel arch is working properly. 